Hi there, welcome to a short topic video on the functions of the price mechanism. Many years ago, Adam Smith, one of the founding fathers of economics, described the invisible hand of the price mechanism, which the hidden hand of the market operating in competitive conditions through the pursuit of self-interest, allocated resources largely in society's best interests. Well, of course, there are still plenty of free market economists out there who believe that the market should be left to allocate resources with minimal government intervention. Others, of course, believe that market failures are endemic and persistent and important and require intervention by the state. But in this short video, we're just going to look at the key functions of the price mechanism. UK is a mixed economy. We have a mix of private sector and state activity. Uh, most economies, of course, are mixed economies. But what are the key functions of the price mechanism? Allocation, rationing, signaling. So essentially, the price mechanism helps to allocate scarce resources amongst competing uses. Uh, one of the key functions of the price mechanism is, is to ration. We'll have a look at that in a second. But prices in the market serve to ration resources, when, particularly when demand outstrips supply. Prices also send important signals. They send information to producers about where resources are required and where they're not. And the price mechanism is an important vehicle for changing the incentive structures faced by both consumers and businesses. So let's look at two of these in a little bit more detail. The rationing function is where prices serve to ration resources when demand is greater than supply. So, for example, when there's a shortage of a product, the price is bid up and essentially leaving only those with the willingness and the ability to pay to purchase the product. Um, so there's a lot of good examples of food prices, of course, affecting people's real purchasing power. The high cost of renting is a way of rationing excess demand for rented accommodation, particularly in our major cities. Auctions, of course, are a way of uh, stripping out those who are willing to pay different prices particularly online auctions. Tickets for a big major event, such as an Leicester City's last home game having won the Premiership or a Tutor to You revision conference, you know, tickets for a big event, clearly demand outstrip supply and perhaps the, the, the shadow market creates a, a rationing function there. In our diagram, I'm showing here an inward shift of the supply curve that forces the price up and of course that rations demand because there are some people who don't have the effective demand to be able to purchase the product. The signaling function, I think, is probably the most important aspect of the price mechanism. So what, what does it mean? Well, prices perform a signaling function. So prices are just to demonstrate where resources are required. And they, they rise and fall to reflect scarcity and surpluses. So for example, when prices are rising, maybe that's because of high demand from consumers. That's a signal to suppliers perhaps to expand production to meet demand. If there's too much supply in the market, prices tend to fall and that helps to eliminate a surplus by allowing uh, consumers to buy more and also by incentivizing producers maybe to send to supply less. Lots and lots of good examples of where the price mechanism sends signals. So coffee farmers, if there's a fall in the world price of coffee, it sends a signal to some of them. They might be better off um, ripping up their coffee plantations and starting to produce other products instead. The fall in the price of oil in the last 12 months or so has uh, caused some significant signaling effects in the market for both shale oil and gas in the United States and Canada and elsewhere, but also the, the uh, profit motive in the renewable energy industry. Share prices, of course, send important signals about uh, current and future profitability. Interest rates on loans send a signal to potential borrowers as well. So the price mechanism uh, is largely built on the idea of the signaling function. It's, it's really important. Here's a good example of prices in action. Uh, this is an index of uh, footwear products in the UK. So things like sandals and shoes and trainers, etc. And actually over the last uh, 10 years or so, there's been a quite a sustained fall in the average price index for footwear products in the UK. The index has fallen from about 107 in 2003 to about 80, 84 in 2014. So a significant fall. Why has that happened? Well, in part because of increased competition, the imports of cheap footwear from the likes of Thailand and China and Bangladesh, Indonesia. So global competition has driven prices down. 
We've also seen intense retail competition on the high street, uh, particularly in the deep discount sports sectors, such as Sports Direct and, and JJB Sports, what have you. And of course, increasingly, people can buy online. Uh, the cost of inputs might have fallen. So, for example, the cost of leather or the cost of manufacturing might have gone down, increasing supply. And it could well be the case that uh, a relatively strong exchange rate also makes imports cheaper. So a combination of supply and demand factors is causing footwear prices to fall. There's genuine deflation in the market. Well, that sends a signal to consumers. Uh, many people now are buying, you know, cheap trainers. And in fact, oftentimes they'll just buy another pair when it comes to repair. It's cheaper to buy another pair than it is to, to repair them. It sends a signal to consumers and of course it sends important signals to, to suppliers in a very competitive retail environment. So we've looked at the functions of the price mechanism. The key things to take away from this are that the price mechanism is a decentralized uh, machine, often works incredibly well. And the key to it is the way in which signaling and allocation of resources happens and the rationing function through the price mechanism. Hopefully that was useful. Good luck in your vision.